Hey Tiger fans, Ben Rosenbaum here inside Johnny United Stadium where this spring we'll be interviewing all of your Towson football coaches as we start from the goal line and take it all the way into the end zone as we get to know your coaches and what makes them tick as they get your Tigers ready for this upcoming season. Get ready fans, taking to the house starts now. All right, Coach Rob Ambrose, we're out here. Beautiful day in Towson University inside Johnny United Stadium on Minigan Field. Let's go for a little walk. Let's do it. So you played here. Obviously, you coach here. Mm -hmm. When you come out into United Stadium, whether it's practice, a game day, what goes through your head? Mm. Different, different thoughts for different days. On practice days, if you look around, like from the distance from the building to the sidelines, I usually carry all the weight of whatever's going on during the day. But the minute we go inside the white lines, anything that doesn't immediately have to do with us being better as a football team gets washed away. These are my two, two and a half hours of focusing solitude that I can tune out all the other crap, be it at home or administrative work or anything that doesn't have to do with these kids getting better at what they love to do. When you rewind all the way to when you were a player in high school and you were looking for a place for not too long ago looking for a place to go to school and play college football we ask the kids today this now all the time when they graduate what was it for you about Towson that made you want to come here that's a long it's a long list of interesting things that happened to me in my recruiting process but in the end it boiled down to people and um, a bunch of the guys that I met when I came on my recruiting visit I really connected with them uh, I thought Coach Albert was a real guy. But, uh, he had had success at Division Three and Division Two level. And I liked the idea, the fact that we were going to go to Division One. That this, it was a building thing. It was a growing thing, and it's in the state of Maryland. And I started started feeling an akin to wanting to be involved with something in my home state like that. I put all of those things together, I ended up being a Tiger. And now the head coach. Uh... What's always been interesting to me, probably the most interesting thing to me about this staff is your brother's on your coaching staff. I have an older brother. What is it like? What's that dynamic like <laughs> working with working with your, your brother? Mm. It's awesome. It truly is awesome that um, being 13 years apart and him being born so much later than me, I was out of the house when he was young and um, missed a lot of his formative years. Got to spend a little time with him when he was in college. And so us being able to live our lives every day together like we did when we were younger, and his wife and uh, two daughters being involved in my kids' life and my life all the time. That's really cool. But as far as the, the what's it like, that's a question she'd really pose to him because I'm the boss and he has to work for me, and that's kind of difficult. You know, so we both acknowledge that it's one of the coolest things in the world. You know, you talk, look at the Stoops brothers get to work together, and uh, it, it's a rare, rare thing, and we, we truly appreciate it. But I think it's a little more difficult for him than it is for me. <laughs> And sticking with family for a second, I've traveled with the team now for two years. Your, your dad is always on the sidelines. And then at home games and some away games, your kids are there for you. Having family so close around on game days, what is that like for you? Awesome. There, there's no, it is family, period. It's a football family. It's, I've been involved with the football family my entire life. My first living memory is a football game. So having my dad here, that's, that's icing on the cake. But all his players, his former players are part of my family, the players that we played with here, players that will go on forever. This is, it's a fraternity that exists beyond the bounds of the institution. Uh, it's, it might be hard. Maybe you can do this for like TV and stuff, but if I go somewhere and I meet somebody and we're talking, I'm in a group of people, the guy says, I played ball at blank, blank school. Immediately, we're related. Like there's, there's, a, there's a mutual respect because we know what it's like to put the helmet on and go play the, play the game and how hard that is. So. Being involved, being having your family involved all the time, it, it it's a great thing, but it should be a natural thing. The truth be told, the only reason I ever came back here was because of my family. My family's here. My kids wanted me to come back, and they wanted to be a part of this. All right, and now we're gonna take a little break. We've reached the 50 here okay. at Unitas, okay. so we're gonna do a little speed round. I'm gonna answer, or I'm gonna ask you a couple questions, and you don't have to do one word. Doesn't have to be only one word. Just answer as quick as you can. Do I get points for being fast? We could do that at the end of the year. We can see who finished the fastest. We can put a timer on it. All right, you ready to go, Coach? Sure. All right, starting right now. Favorite TV show or movie? 
Uh, right now, I would say the Game of Thrones is, I don't watch much TV, but I make time for them. If you could travel anywhere, where would you travel? Right now, it would be Fiji or Tahiti. I really want to spend a week or at least a couple nights on one of those huts on the water away from everybody. If you could play or coach another sport, what sport? Oh, wow. Uh, I'm going to throw lacrosse just because it's one of the sports that I haven't done, and I think it's really, really cool. Pre-game superstition or ritual, do you have any? Oh, goodness gracious. Uh, a million different ones. How, we don't have enough time for all this. <laughs> Give us one. The clo um, first thing I do in the morning is, oh, no matter where I am, doesn't matter what game day, wherever I am, I will walk to the window and look out. I will evaluate the day, weather, or whatever it is, and accept the fact that wherever we are, this is where we're going to work. Who's the funniest coach on staff? Oh, wow. Right now, it's going to be a toss-up between John Schwartz and Dan Hernandez. And if we videotape that, I think we could probably sell it. Favorite thing about Towson? Oh, wow. Yeah, you guys all, the people. That, uh, the people. This place has changed geographically. Like, the landscape has changed so much. It's not so weird. But the one thing that remains is the people who are really, really special. Best coaching memory? Off the top of my head. It would have to be that, that uh, fourth of November 29 in ODU that we drew up in the time. I was actually mad at them at the time. Uh, they screwed up a little bit. I told them, I told them it was going to work. I knew we were going to get a first down. I know that sounds insane, fourth and 29. And I, I know we we're going to get a first down. I didn't expect a touchdown, but that was cool. Favorite food? Pizza or crabs? You know, the standard line in my house says you're not allowed to be in the Ambrose family if you don't like eating one of those. And then the final question is something people may not know about you. Oh, something people may not know about me. Well, you know, some of probably figure that's really hard. Um, uh, maybe that I listen to classical music in my free time. That if I have any free time, I love I know, so I'm growing grass in my yard. Like I, I have a green thumb when I have the time for it. All right. So that does it for the speed round. We got 50 more yards to do. Sure. Let's keep going. So, sticking with your coaching staff and Towson as a family, you've got a couple of Towson alums on this staff. In addition to yourself, Coach uh, Kosmakos, mm -hmm. uh, your new running backs coach, uh, Scott Van Zyl, and Coach Donatelli also has an undergrad degree from here, as well as his one from Frostburg. For you, having Towson guys on the staff, does that add anything? I believe it does everywhere you go. It's one of the things that you can either you can coach football and that can be your job, or you can coach football and that can be who you are. And I, you know, there's people that say, "Well, I don't take my job home." And I, no, I can't do that. Not to do this right. That I got 100 kids. I'm responsible for them 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day of the year. So having guys who are intrinsically just rooted in a university like these guys are, it's it's more than a paycheck. It's more than the kids. You want to see this place do well because this is where you came from. And then now, NFL Tigers. Terrence West, obviously, with the Baltimore Ravens. Jordan Dangerfield with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Jermone Bushrod's had a great career, uh, now with the Miami Dolphins. Ryan Dallaire with the Panthers. Ty Smith. Uh, the list goes on and on. You know, we weren't, other than Jermone, we weren't really seeing in this era a lot of Towson guys. You can go back to Sean Landetta, obviously, but having those guys in the NFL and then come back from time to time. Does it help as a selling point to say that, you know, we may be a small school, but we got guys in the league? I think it's big, you know, for young kids these days that they want to see the opportunity for that. And what we can tell them is that, and, and this stands for wherever you go to school, the NFL has grown to be such a big conglomerate that they're going to find you if you're good enough. What you really want to do is go surround yourself with people that are going to help find the best version of you because that's going to give you a chance to succeed at the next level, whatever the next level is, be it the NFL or professional. And all, the, all these kids bought in. All the guys that you talked about, they bought into this. So it was kind of a natural occurrence for them. And they had the skill set and they worked their face off. We watched the young guys walk in here and they're like, wow, I can go. I don't have to go to College Park. I don't have to go to Nebraska to go to the NFL. I can go to Towson. Uh, we got good coaches, we play a good brand of ball, and it's enough that the NFL scouts are like, yeah, I, I, they respect how we do what we do, and it shows by how many kids we got and how successful they are in the next level. And then the other day you had Pro Day and a couple of your seniors going for that NFL dream and 
you know, Darius Victor, Christian Summers, Andre Dessenberg, Jordan Minat. You're replacing a lot of key players now this year. Uh, are there guys on this roster that you know can step right in? Obviously, you think about somebody like Shane Simpson filling in for Vito, but uh, defensively and the receivers, that's, you know, there's going to be a lot of guys who didn't get that much playing time. It's, um, thank you for reminding me. I was not stressed out that we had this conversation. <laughs> right. uh, it's like a jigsaw puzzle that changes every year. It's, and, the, and the pieces change. They grow and they bend and they move. And it's our job to put them in the right places. Uh, we lost a number of guys. I mean, there's only 70 guys in spring ball right now. So it'll be a big recruiting class. I'm very pleased with the guys that we have. They seem to be well poised to take that next step. The best part about them is as talented as they are physically, Watching these kids interact with themselves and each other on a day-to-day -day basis. There's something about this group that's a little bit different. They're a little bit tighter. They're a little bit more focused. There's something that they want to get to that they haven't gotten to. Now, every kid in this locker room has never won a conference title. And it's not been, I only got a couple that went to the national championship and they just watched. So they want something that is their own. And it's fun to be around. You mentioned the signing class. This was the biggest signing class in Towson football history. Was that something you guys set out knowing you were going to have to do to fill all those holes, or did the pieces just sort of fall into place? Well, as, as you go through cycles, because of when we started in nine, and then the number of guys that we brought in, the guys that moved on and moved out, it just it, you can't control the flow on the top end. Some guys graduated, like Sean Flaherty, graduated in three years. Two bad knees, he really can't play anymore. So he moved on and, and had to replace a guy like him is you know, really hard to do. Amos Campbell with his shoulder, same thing. So we knew it was going to be a big class, um, <laughs> and as such, it's really cool to see. You know, you keep talking to all these kids, and they have tremendous potential. But it's going to be a whole bunch of new names and faces that you're going to get to cover. It's going to be really exciting. And coach, now as we cross the goal line here into the end zone, uh, my last question for you: your outlook for the upcoming season. What is in your mind right now as you look forward to next season kickoff? Mm, I got to balance this between how we do what we do for the why we do what we do, and then where I want to end up. You know, I don't really focus on the winning. I focus on us doing it as well as we can do it for as long as we can do it consistently. You know what I'm going to say? If these kids work to be the best they can be consistently over and over again, what comes out on the back end, everybody's going to smile about. Uh, I'm not going to be happy until we're back in the playoffs. And, and if you go back, this will be nine seasons. If you go back nine years ago, if the guy standing, you know, standing doing my job said he's not going to be happy until we're going to the playoffs every single year and making a run at this all the time everybody watching this would have said you're nuts it's a different time it's a different it's a different decade and things are different my expectations are that that's we have the ability here as long as everyone involved keeps the focus and keeps this train moving forward that there's no reason why we can't be new hampshire james madison and that we are constantly in the playoffs every year and then we're making a run you excited <laughs> I may be antihistamined up and stuff, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't get up any day with a frown on my face. I don't care what the weather is. I get to come here. I get to work with these young people, and I get to be a part of the place that made me. All right, Coach, thanks for joining us for 100 yards here. And before we let you go, what would be a touchdown without a touchdown celebration? So that being said, got a football here. I'll hold your mug. Mm -hmm. You can you do whatever you want. You can do a dance. You can do a spike. It's your I show. Have, I have done this before. I have scored a touchdown once or two, one or two times in my life. And uh, I always found it, it was the compilation of a goal. Like you, you want, you built something to get somewhere and you finally got somewhere. And I always thought you, that you could freak out and act like it's the first time you ever, for all you people out there watching, remember the first time you ever did blank? Yeah, insert that word there, okay? I like the idea of actually actually acting like you've been there before. I think it's a little more disheartening to the defense. They don't really care about your celebration. But when you walk up to the ref and you hand him the ball and you walk away and you look at those guys like, yeah, I've been here before and I'm coming back, it tends to leave a mark. So that would be my statement. Here you go, ref. Thanks. All right, so that'll do it for us here today inside Johnny United Stadium. For Coach Rob Ambrose, I'm Ben Rosenbaum. We'll see you next time, and as always, go Tigers.